Skyrim is over 10 years old now, and with that comes its ups and downs, glitches, and memorable moments. One moment I'm sure everyone can remember is when you first get approached by unique looking cultists and hear of Merak, the first dragonborn. And what is up guys, Andrew from the Denmen here, and today I want to take a look back at the Dragonborn DLC and what made it one of the best expansions in gaming history. There is a lot that actually came within the DLC itself, so if you are excited, make sure you hit that like button and comment what your favorite feature that came into Dragonborn was. But with that being said, there's a lot to go over, so get comfy, grab that bottle of hunting brew mead, and let's get right into the video. Back in November of 2011, Skyrim was a fresh experience full of new secrets to find and lands to explore. Jump just over one year later, and the Dragonborn DLC was released, and with it came an entirely new location separate from the province of Skyrim. A lot of people enjoyed their time discovering everything the Nordic region had to offer, but the main criticism against it was the lack of diversity. When people think of the lands of Skyrim, they think large mountains, snow covering everything in sight, and overall, a bland look to the province. Even though I don't think this is true, it was a fair point for anyone who shared in this idea. Everything changed when Dragonborn released, because we got an entirely new area with the island of Solstheim. With it came a new culture to dive into with the Dunmer, an entirely new zone to explore, and a ton of quests to complete. Solstheim itself was very diverse and different from the main province of Skyrim. First off, there was more Dunmer influence on the island and this made it feel more alien and akin to the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. The town of Ravenrock was a great callback to the previous title and the backdrop of Red Mountain was amazing to say the least. The ash-covered island made it very different from Skyrim and led to a unique environment that would change because of the eruption of Red Mountain. We did get to see the island of Solstheim once before in the Blood Moon DLC for Morwen, but this time around it was changed. The ash environment gave us entirely new enemies with the ash fawn and burnt spriggans and shifted the environment to uncover new secrets. It also left other locations under the ash, take Kolbjorn Barrow for instance. In Morwen, we were sent there to rescue Odfrid, but in the Elder Scrolls V, we see return submerged from the eruption of Red Mountain. Little easter eggs like this make the addition of Solstheim that much better, and a great overall location. The Dragonborn DLC also brought in some weapons and armor that were unique and very viable to use through different playthroughs. They really took it to the next level. Take the Deathbrand set for instance. Not only was it an amazing set to use, but it was also unique in its perks. Only wearing one piece of the armor would make it worse than a lot of other endgame sets, but if you put them all together, the effects would stack and make one of the best light armor builds. They also continued this trend with the two weapons associated with Deathbrand. Soul Render and Blood Scythe made for some really special weapons, and even the way you acquired the Deathbrand set was unique to Solstheim. Since this is an island, they decide to use that theme and make a pirate quest out of it. Having to find buried treasure in a lot of the different areas of Solstheim was a fun way to continue the island theme and explore a lot of the island as well. And what about the story behind the Dragonborn DLC? Facing off against another Dragonborn was a compelling story to tell, and in my opinion, Bethesda did really well in this area. Merak played an interesting role in wanting to break away from the Dagic Prince Hermaeus Mora. Learning about what happened to him in the past with the dragons and becoming a servant to the prince really worked well. Not just that though, but the Realm of Apocrypha itself was a great location. The way it brought on an even more alien theme to the DLC when there are already giant mushrooms, little blue goblins, and ghosts of enemies past just goes to show how unique the world of the Elder Scrolls truly is. Apocrypha though is able to take that fantasy vibe and turn it up to 11 with the enemies you find there, the location itself, and all the power-ups you can get from the place. Starting with the enemies, not only are they unique looking, but they are also considered to be quite challenging. 
Both the Seekers and Lurkers are very tough foes with different abilities for each of them. Then the location of Apocrypha itself is a very unique one very different from anything we have ever seen. The way Bethesda was able to imagine what a realm built by a prince of wisdom and make it in his image was truly an interesting idea and I can't wait to see the next Daedric realm we get. Heading back to Solstheim itself, we have three very different towns on the island with Ravenrock, Skull Village, and Tel Mithrin. Ravenrock was a very interesting location because it felt like a town on the brink of collapse and the player would do quests for the villagers and bring it back to its former glory before the eruption of Red Mountain. This was a compelling story to tell and it was great to see it play out through a lot of the different storylines. Skull Village played a big role in the main storyline for the DLC, but also introduced the player to what Stalrim is. Being very different from the town of Ravenrock, Skull Village was a great way to bring together both the past and the present of Solstheim. And finally, we have the giant mushrooms of Tel Mithrin. Headed by the Telvanni wizard Neloth, Tel Mithrin was a very unique location and a great callback to the game of Morrowind. Here you are able to help the wizard in his studies and when you gain his trust, you are even able to create staffs. This was a great addition to Skyrim and I hope we see it return in the Elder Scrolls 6. The island of Solstheim was a great location to travel to from the storied realm of Apocrypha to the snow-covered landscape of Skull Village. It brought great diversity from the province of Skyrim and was a welcome addition to the game. Solstheim itself brought a lot to Skyrim and it really completed the game that was already one of the best of all time. I hope we see something just as good in future Bethesda titles like Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI. But for now, we will just have to wait and see. But that is all for me now though guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment any videos you want to see in the future. And I'll see you all next time.